you know, patients come in with a wide variety of misconceptions. And, you know, part of it we can blame on the counseling, which, you know, if, if their referring provider is well-versed in cochlear implant technology, has kept up with the candidacy criteria, we're not going to see bad counseling from them. But it's people who don't really understand how an implant works or who it's for. That's where we see a patient coming in, sometimes not even realizing it's a surgery. You know, that's, we, we see that end of the spectrum where uh, they don't even know it's a, it's a surgery or some of them think, oh, I'm, aren't I getting it today? I'm Go ahead and put it in. You know, that, that's complete, complete misconceptions. But, you know, the common things are, you know, they think it's a brain implant. You know, it's like, like Neuralink, you know, Elon Musk style, <laughs> uh, a brain implant. A lot of them say, I'm too old for that, you know, and they're like in their 60s, you know, or 70s. Uh, that There's good literature supporting geriatric population cochlear implants. They, they do very well with it. Um, a lot of them, is, with the surgery itself, they think it's like a big inpatient hospitalization where half their head is shaved, like a craniotomy. That, that's a big That's a big one. They don't understand the surgery, and the, the referring provider often doesn't understand the surgery either. Um, and they're getting inaccurate counseling that way. Some of them aren't being told that there's, a, there's at, at least at the time of recording this podcast, there's still an external device that you have to wear. You know, we are, you know, there's an internally implanted device and then there's a speech processor externally, which I tell them is analogous to their hearing aid 